Hello there, welcome to Tucking Cash. So today we're going to continue to raid some of the birds from the latest Wingspan Asia. And of course, joining me as always, we have Flan from Winging It. How are you doing, Flan? Hello, I'm doing very well. Yeah, good to be here again and uh, excited to look at some more yeah, new birds from the Asia expansion. Yeah, absolutely. So we have quite a few birds to to look at today, so we're going to jump right into it. So coming up, we have the olive back sunbird. Ooh, very, very nice and bright and colorful bird. Oh, definitely. yeah. So nice power as well. When activated, each player may roll any one dice and gain that food from the supply. So, yeah, I mean, very reminiscent of, you know, the hummingbirds, I guess, from the, from the base game. And uh, again, like some of the powers that we looked at in the previous parts, when you can get food access outside of the forest, um, that's a, a pretty nice power as well. So three points, one food, and you get a star nest. I think I'm definitely going to be playing this early game. Yeah, absolutely a play. And yeah, definitely remind me of the hummingbird, but it it's kind of like a better hummingbird, would you say? Because everyone gets to roll a dice and you get star nest. So it's kind yeah, of nice. Yeah, it's, it's, it's tricky. I mean, I, I'm... I, kind of on first viewing it's difficult to say if it's better or worse i mean i guess with the hummingbirds when you're activating it you get first choice of any food in the feeder Ooh, um, yeah. whereas here you know you're rolling a dice and it's then seeing what comes up it's like it's definitely a gamble you know maybe it comes up with a food that you don't want and maybe when your opponent is going to roll a dice they get a food that they want so it's a gamble but i think it's a pretty safe gamble i mean these kind of cheap Single food birds, if you get those down in the early game, get a bit of food, I, th I think you're always happy. Yep, so pretty good. All right, what do we have next? Oh, we have a when play power is the Golden Fessin. Oh, very nice. Yep. Yeah, I think I remember seeing this one teased in yep. uh, in some of the earlier reveals. So when played, all players lay two eggs and you get to lay two additional eggs. So yeah, I mean, very interesting power. Um, being able to get eggs, I think particularly early game could be quite powerful right um obviously three food makes it a little bit trickier but three of any food so you know particularly with some of the birds like the one we just looked at where you're kind of maybe getting random food you don't want um this this could work and i suppose if you're going to play at a time maybe when your opponents don't have space for that egg as well um that you're giving them could be handy so I don't know if it's an instant play. I think particularly early on, I think it is going to be situational, but I would definitely be holding on to this one. I think this has definitely got potential. Yeah. For me, I think this is almost play as well. I, I, I think this is the bird that I play in my first game. And again, mm. like the flexible food cores and then like the four eggs can really carry you far, like, you know, into right. the game that you don't have to lay eggs. So think about the turns you save and maybe like it, it can be kind of a counter to like ping power as well if you just get massive eggs in one go so um definitely a lot of potential with this bird yeah definitely all right coming up we have another when play power this looks kind of fun <laughs> um this is the rose ring parakeet oh very interesting yeah i do remember seeing this one as well so when played, copy a when played ability on one of your neighbor's birds. So, yeah, yeah I mean, it's going to be really situational, isn't it? You, If you see that your opponent has just played a really nice when played power, you know, even the pheasant that we yeah. just looked at could potentially <laughs> be one that you might want to copy. Um, but yeah, I mean, it, these kind of birds, there was a few, I think, in the Oceania expansion as well that let you copy someone else's power. Um, really interesting and some good dynamics there. So... I think like all of these kind of powers, it is going to be so situational early game. You know, if your opponent has just played, I'm thinking something like a Brant would be a good one to copy. Yeah. Um, again, any of these kind of powers that gives you um, some free food or some free eggs um, as well would be a good one to copy. So yeah, one food early game. If you can get some good benefit from it, then absolutely I'd like to play it. Oh, absolutely a play. Again, one food. Like if mm. someone... Imagine someone spent three food to play the pheasant and then you just exactly. play like this and be like, oh, I'm going to get four eggs with one food. Yeah, that's very nice. That was going to be fun. Okay, next we have a forest bird coming. So we have the okay. Verditer flycatcher. <laughs> okay, another right. very nice looking birdie. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so when activated, if you have gained a worm from the bird feeder on this turn, gain one cherry from the supply. So 
That's very interesting power. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, a dependent activation based on what you've done on that turn. We'd, we've not really seen anything too much like this, I think, in previous expansions. Yeah. So, um, yeah, anytime you can get food gaining power in the forest, two different food and five points. Yeah. I and mean, there's a lot of kind of real good uh, options there to be to be had. Yeah, getting food, like I say. Um, I think I think that's a strong power. I'd be looking to play that early game. Yeah, I think it's a play as well. Like compared to the base game flycatcher, this is an upgrade mm. as well because the cherries from the supply. Exactly. Um, yeah. Exactly. And I I think the key to this power as well is like you know you can get the cherry if you gain like grub from another mm. brown power that you activate it later, as long as it's during the turn. So yeah, it's quite flexible. Yeah. Exactly, and worms are quite easy to get from the bird feeder, so I can see that being activated quite a lot. Yep. All right, next we have another ping power. We have the Violet Cuckoo. Ooh. Yeah. So, yeah, very very similar, I think, to the Asian coal that we looked at before. So, yep. once between turns, when another player takes a lay eggs action, lay one egg on another bird with a wingspan less than 30 centimeters, you may go two over its egg limit while using this power. So... Yeah, I mean, we said it time and time again. Um, these pink powers that let you get free eggs, really, really nice powers. Um, particularly, I think, you know, if your opponent has a strong grass and is getting lots of eggs, you can get some free points there. Um, being able to go two over on the egg limit, that's really, yeah. really flexible, um, I think, to be, able to, to be able to have that. You know, so many times you have these pink powers and nowhere to lay the eggs because um, you've either filled up on the spots or, yeah, you just haven't got enough birds down. So... Um, I think just two different food again for a forest bird of five points and a really nice pink power. I'd definitely be looking to play this. Yeah, absolute play. I definitely like the flexibility of the new pink power. Absolutely. All right, coming up, we have a wetland bird, the Great Comoran. It's a long Ooh. text. <laughs> it is, yeah. So, all right, it's a hunting power. So, when activated, you may move one fish from this bird to your supply. Then roll any two dice. If any are fish, cash one fish on this bird from the supply. Okay, so I suppose this is one where you're going to be activating it Over, sequentially. Yeah. And and if you get a cash on one turn, then you can gain that as, as food yeah. um, on the next turn. So this is interesting. I mean, I know whenever we've had these kind of hunting powers in the base game and in the various expansions... Um, I always see people asking, oh, you know, can I keep this food in my yeah. supply rather than cash it because, you know, maybe I want to play some more birds or use it somewhere else. So I think being able to have that option, um, I think that's pretty good. And, you know, two dice getting fish, it's not the best odds, but um, it's it's reliable. You know, you know you're always going to get those two dice to roll. It's not going to depend on the, right. on the bird feeders. So, um, yeah, it's... It's a situational one. I wouldn't be going out of my way to play early game. Two fish can be quite tricky to get hold of, but um, I think this this could potentially work um, okay. if you are able to get the food cost for that. Yeah, I I don't know. For me, I I feel like this is more of a tug for me. It, yeah. it just a it's just the sense that the first time you activate it, you you're not gonna mm. gain any fish. You know, like, right? You have to repeat activate it, and then it's like two fish for six points. Like it's okay, yeah. but. I, I just Absolutely. remember when, when this bird came up, like in one of my game, I, I, I saw this text and this power. My initial <laughs> thought is just like, why even bother? I would just say. Like... Yeah, yeah. I think it, I think it's one of those, you know, like I said, we have similar powers um, in, in the base game and in early expansions where I don't think you'd go out of your way to play this, but in a pinch, you know, if this is one of only a limited number of wetland options you can get, then I think it's certainly workable and you can expect a few points, but... Yeah, early game, I, I think I probably would be holding at most, but definitely, I think in most cases, it's going to be a tuck. Yeah. All right. We have an interesting two power coming up. It's All the right. Fire Fronted Saren. Ooh. I know. A very nice bird. I like that art. I know. The art one, so. is so pretty, but. Really good. Um, yeah, so the power, teal power round end, lay one egg on this bird. For each bird to its left in this row okay that's kind of interesting so mm -hmm. you want to be filling up a habitat and then playing yeah. this one kind of towards the end of that habitat and i mean that's going to be tricky right so yeah. early game you're not really going to get any Many, sort of usage yeah. out of that and that's really where the eggs are so so much more valuable is when right. you can get them in that early game um yeah and and the thing is right once you've started to fill up a habitat are you going to be looking to play a one-point bird as that yeah. final 
bird in the row. Yeah, you know, one that's point normally is way low. Yeah, that's normally where you look to play those kind of seven, eight, nine point birds. So it's a shame because I quite like the idea of this bird, but yeah. I think in most cases it's going to be a tuck. Yeah, I feel like it's a tuck. I, I think it's just like the power is interesting, but the food cost and point is mm. really hard to justify. Yeah. Um, all right. Coming up next, we have another hunter. We have the Forest Outlet. Ooh, ooh very nice uh, hunting power. So similar to some we looked at before, I think. When activated, choose any two dice, roll them up to three times. Each time, if you roll at least one worm or rodent, cash one here. If not, stop and return all food cached here this turn. I mean, immediate thoughts, that feels quite strong. Oh, yeah. Um, you know, rolling for worms or rodents, you get a lot of flexibility there. Yeah. And, you know, rolling two dice, so you're pretty likely to get that. Um, yeah, I mean, even on its own, I think four points for two foods is pretty comparable to some of the, the previous hunters we've looked at in this series, but also, obviously, uh, in prior expansions as well. So, um, yeah, it, as part of a strong forest, this feels like a, a really good power to be getting down. So I think I'll be playing this. Oh yeah, definitely a play. Um, so I, I play against this bird in one of my first game of Wingspan <laughs> Asia and it just felt so OP. Like my opponent yeah, was yeah. like cashing like two, two food or three food in a turn for, for That's just gaining food. Like, <laughs> yeah, yeah I, I, I quite like all these kind of powers where you can get more than one cash that they do feel quite strong. Yep. All right, next we have another interesting forest bird. Okay, it has a long name. So it's the white brown tit wobbler. White brow, brow, tit wobbler. White browed. Yeah. Very nice. Okay, <laughs> another very colorful bird as yep, well. So, absolutely. Uh, when activated for each bird in your forest with an egg on it, roll any one dice. Choose one type of food you rolled and gain one of that food from the supply. Okay, so you're gaining one food no matter what as long as you're rolling dice yeah but i guess the more birds you have that have got eggs on you're going to get more choice so that's right yeah that's that's interesting i suppose it includes itself so it would work as a solo yeah. forest play as long as you've got an egg on it you get to roll a dice and get an extra food so yeah i mean i can see that working a couple of foods for two points is maybe a bit expensive but you do get a star nest so yeah, yeah. I, I think in general any of these kind of powers any of these kind of birds that they cost two different foods and they're going to gain you extra food when you activate them. I mean, those are the kind of b birds I like to get down in the early game. So I think I'd be playing this. Yeah, I, I think it's a good play as well for starter birds for sure. All right, next. Ooh, this is a nice one. We have a two power <laughs> coming up is the Sri Lanka Blue Magpie. Oh, yes. Look at this. Oh, yes. I do remember seeing this one in the teaser. So ah. um, yeah, round end, you may cash one food from your supply on each of your other birds. So really, really strong power. I mean, already on its own, right? Nine yeah. points for three food. Yeah. Um, that's such a strong return. And then just being able to get rid of some of your extra food and cash those on other birds. Yeah, I mean, that feels like maybe not the kind of bird you go for early game, but I think certainly, even if you played this probably just in round three, I think mm -hmm. you could still get usage even round four if you've got a bunch of extra food. Yeah. Because you can cash one for as many birds as you've got. So, you know, if yeah. you've got 10 birds down, that's 10 cash food as long as you've got the food for it. So, yeah, this this feels like an instant play. Um, yeah, any any time from the mid game onwards just as a huge point bomb. Yeah, absolutely. Like, the, I, I just like the... There's no limit, like, you know, it's mm. just like you can cash it on any other birds on the board. It's going to be a lot of cash food coming your way. <laughs> yeah. All right. Oh, next we have an interesting when play power. The name is kind of cute as well. It's the Schmeel. <laughs> oh, the Schmeel. <laughs> the Schmeel. <laughs> I just love to Very say nice. the name. <laughs> <laughs> play it just so you can say it but. yeah very nice okay so when played you draw four cards tuck two behind this bird and add the other two to your hand okay mm. so yeah giving me kind of i guess vibes of birds like the still and the red and even the brant i suppose yeah. that we used in the base game anytime you can get those kind of powers where you're drawing cards early um that's a really nice one to get yeah. and obviously you know you're drawing four and you know, maybe two of them you aren't going to look to keep so you instantly get a couple of points for that um as well which is nice i would say maybe the food cost is going to put me off a little bit i think yeah. um three foods early game yeah. it is quite difficult to get hold of um but you know i think if you've got a good food source um i think i think you could justify this i think you could make this work as a way of getting some cards and maybe get a second bird in your forest or maybe get the wetland started so i'd definitely hold 
Uh, I think there's kind of birds, and yeah, depending on the food source, maybe let's play it. Yeah, um, I think for me it's like almost like leaning towards play. The thing I like about it is that you can play this in forest, like exactly, you know, exactly. That's like you can jumpstart your game by just like playing this in the forest mm -hmm. and then like gain cards right away. So right, um, it's quite yeah. nice. Um, yeah, I do like that. Yeah, again, seeing birds like this, like I. Again, I just want to bring the parakeet up again. Like it's just gonna cause so much heartburn mm, when like you that's spend. That's a good point. Yeah. <laughs> you spend one food to gain exactly the same power. <laughs> like <laughs> there's a lot of potential there. I know that that was such a good play. All right, next. Ooh, I I I love this bird, but um, <laughs> it's a yellow power. It's the common tailor bird oh very nice oh this is the very confusing power isn't it so it's not that confusing <laughs> but go for it well i remember seeing this one so yeah. game ends find a contiguous group of birds in your preserve that all have the same nest type lay one egg on each of them star nest counts any type so this is kind of an interesting you're it's like you're trying to do a puzzle yeah. within the existing puzzle of wingspan you're trying to fit loads of different birds yeah. that have the same nest type all together and sort of line them up and create a nice little chain so yeah. i mean if, if you can maximize off that i'm thinking you know maybe something like six or seven if you can get that many eggs that's a pretty nice play at the end of the game obviously it has a star nest itself so yeah. um that could be quite useful maybe as a late play to kind of link some of those nests together but I mean, it's so tricky. I don't think you'd look to play this early game um, at all with this kind of game end power. But um, yeah, like I say, if you can maximize off that, use the star nest itself. Uh, I think there's real potential for points here. Yeah, for me, I'm totally biased. This is absolutely a play for me because <laughs> again, small sample size, but both yeah. time I play this bird, I think I score at least like seven or eight eggs mm. from from just around like game end from this like it yeah. just worked out for me somehow for, for both of those games so i'm just like emotionally attached to this power now <laughs> <laughs> very good power yeah all right we have another two power coming up is the brambling i don't think i've seen Ooh, this bird nice. before but it's very pretty no. art again yeah i do like the artwork of this one as well so Round end, draw two cards from the deck and add them to your hand, then tuck up to two cards from your hand behind this bird. So that's kind of that's kind of like the rough, except yeah. you're doing things the other way around. So yeah. with the rough, you tuck and then draw replacements, but here you're drawing and then tucking. So, I mean, that I quite like that as a, as a concept. I think um, with, with birds like the rough and, and other similar teal powers that we've seen before, they could be quite tricky because you don't always have the cards to activate them. Whereas yeah. obviously here, the brambling, you're already getting those cards. And then if they aren't good cards, you tuck them or maybe you keep them and maybe you have got other cards in your hand that you want to tuck instead. So a um, couple of foods for, for a forest bird. Yeah, I think this is good. I think I'd be looking to play this for sure. Yeah, absolutely. A play as well. Just the card cycle and seeing cards. Yep. All Definitely. right. Looks like we have quite a few when play power. The next coming up right. is the Eurasian Hoople. Oh, wow. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> interesting name, a very interesting looking bird. I mean, as well, look at so. that. It's so yeah. pretty. <laughs> very nice. Okay, so when played, steal one worm from each of your neighbors, mm -hmm. each neighbor from whom a worm was stolen, <laughs> may gain one food from the supply. So, yeah, I mean, I guess it's going to be situational, isn't yeah. it? If you, can get, if you can get a worm from both of your neighbors, um, and it pays for itself. Uh, like, Exactly. I was going to say, you're, you're already paying two worms up front, so you're kind of getting those back instantly. So, you know, obviously you have to have those two worms, but you're effectively only paying one rodent mm -hmm. um, and you're getting seven points and five egg spaces for that. Oh, yeah. So, um, yeah, if you can, I would say if you can get one worm stolen, I think you could probably still make a case for it. But definitely, if, if you can play this and steal two worms back, um, that, that feels like a really good play late in the game. Yeah. It is kind of interesting because I'm pretty sure if you're playing the duet mode, you only steal one That's because true. you only have one opponent. Um, but yeah, yeah, if you can get two in the multiplayer, that one food for seven points so good. So Absolutely, yeah. Definitely at least a hole for this bird. Yeah. All right. Oh, this one is also interesting. <laughs> we have a game end power, the Indian Voucher. Oh, right. Oh, very nice. Okay. Oh, yeah. So game end, you copy one bonus card of the player on your right as if it were your own. So score it based on your own bird. So 
man, this is a pure gamble. <laughs> I know. <laughs> you're, it's zero points. Exactly, exactly. Zero points. I mean, you've not paid any food for it, but um, zero points. And I guess you're you're kind of trying to guess what bonus card your opponent has. So maybe if they played a load of Predator Powers or they played a load of Tucking Powers or if you can see they've yeah. got a lot of a certain nest type or something, you're really gambling You're because you can't see your opponent's bonus cards. Yeah. Um, so you're, you're trying to work out um you know maybe if you just see that they play a lot of bonus card birds maybe if they've got four or five in their hands and you have a lot to choose from you can kind of mitigate that risk but um yeah this is this is all on the gamble when you're not yeah. getting any points for playing it on its own yeah i i think you're right like late game is definitely a big gamble but i mm. i think it has a lot of potential like i i think i'm leaning play for this just in terms of like mm. because it's free and i think you will most likely in early game play this in the context of like winning the end of round goals you know right um that might be helpful and you know like the duet yeah. board allow you to gain free eggs when you play birds That's so true. you might do that um so yeah I think if you can get some additional benefit, like you say, from the from the duet boards or maybe from your own bonus card or an end of round or something like that, um, I think I think you would need that additional benefit to justify playing it because otherwise, yeah. yeah, just gambling on that bonus card that you can't even see is uh, is quite a big risk. Yeah. All right. Coming up next. Oh, we have another another similar game end power is the greater adjutant oh yes yeah there you yeah, go it's just the same the same power except you're going um to the player in your left so i don't know i mean this i think this one feels like in in a sense maybe more of a risk but maybe it's less of a risk because you are still getting four points yeah um but you're paying three food for that yeah. and kind of if you if you think about other bonus card birds you know normally when you're paying that much food you're already getting six maybe seven points yeah. or, or a bunch more egg spaces than this and you're getting to choose your own bonus card rather than just gamble on what someone else has so yeah it's tricky it's really tricky i think again it, it's all going to come down to whether you need the, the gamble late in the game yeah but yeah i think i think having to pay three food um would definitely put me off this one a bit more yeah definitely you know whole or if not a tug mm. for sure yeah all right next oh we have a we have a cube coming up is the common minor oh very <laughs> nice i do like that one butchering on okay. yeah. <laughs> yeah let's not go there um yeah so when activated copy the when activated power of a bird in the grass and of the play on your left so yeah. very interesting bit like that uh parakeet we looked at earlier where you're copying someone else's bird yeah um i mean this is absolute dream like you see your opponents just played a raven or a or a girl or something we um, both have raven that. <laughs> yeah yeah exactly so yeah this is this is the this is like the ultimate uno reverse card oh yeah um, i love you, it you see you see, I love you, you see your you opponent player play a strong brown power uh, I mean, again, one food going in the grasslands. Yeah, I think I think it. Like I say, it's going to be dependent on what your opponent plays, but this would be such a nice bird to have up up your sleeve early in the game. Yeah, absolutely, such flexibility and potential a play for yep. sure. Again, it's going to cause a lot of heartburn when your opponent <laughs> paid three food to play Raven. You'd be like, hey, exactly, my yep. one foot Raven is right here. <laughs> All right, we have another forest bird coming up. It's the Coppersmith Barbet. It's kind of busy Ooh. card here. <laughs> yeah, there's a lot going on there. A lot yeah. going on on that artwork, but uh, very interesting power as well. So gain a worm or a cherry from the bird feeder if there is one. So mm. quite similar, I think, to to some powers that we've seen before. Yeah. Um, I guess in the in the base game. So I'm not used to seeing that kind of you know very very similar power. But I mean, as I said before, any time uh, you're paying two different food for a forest bird and then it gets you that same kind of food back when you activate it i mean that's a that's a really strong power so yeah i think no complaints from me i'll be i'll be definitely looking to play this early on yeah not super exciting but solid play exactly all right next one. Oh, another when play power we have the desert finch oh yes i do remember seeing this one teased so yeah. Um, yeah, when played, lay one egg on this bird for each other bird in your grass. And so, again, like some of the other when played powers, probably going to be a pretty nice point bomb late on. I suppose yeah. if this is your last grassland bird, you're going to get four eggs. So 10 points for three food. And they're three of the same food, which can be quite tricky. But I mean, 10 points is, is 10 points. That's a, that's a pretty nice play uh, late in the game. And again, if you can make that fit with a bonus card or an end of round goal, um, I think you could make that work. So 
not something you play early on, I don't think. But yeah, if you can afford to hold on to it and you can afford to get it down late in the game, I would definitely look to do so. Yeah, definitely have potential, at least a hole. All right. Yep. Okay, this is oh, this is a very pretty bird. This is on the nesting box. So the red jungle fowl. Oh yes, yeah. This was one of the first ones to be to be teased as well. I think so. Yeah. Um. Yeah. When activated, count the eggs on all of your birds. If the total is fewer than six, lay one egg on this bird. So, yeah. I mean, early game feels like a no-brainer, right? You're you're most likely having fewer than six eggs. So. Um, you are going to benefit from this and flexible habitat only two foods so um yeah anytime you know getting eggs particularly in the forest i think is uh, such a strong activation to be able to get so um i think if this is in a starting hand i'm going to be keeping this i'm going to be playing it and i'm going to be getting some free eggs early on yeah absolutely good bird to play yep. all right i think that's about to wrap up today's episode right. so i guess a little bit of a quiz time so we've seen about like 20 birds so far today is there oh, any dear. one particular that really you remember or like it, it jumps oh. out to you or you have to pick I think one the, bird? yeah i think the copying ones particularly the parakeet. i think the, okay. the parakeet the parakeet's <laughs> probably going to be the one that yeah the one that sticks yeah definitely yeah. i think if you can if you can copy a nice strong when played power early on like you're saying you know your opponents maybe just played a two or three food cost bird and then you go and play this and get exactly that same benefit um yeah that that feels like a real nice uh real yeah. nice bird to be getting down early on yeah absolutely all right that wraps it up thank you as always for watching and thank you fun for being here and as always please head over to winging it as well to check out other wingspan content stay tuned and we'll review the rest of the birds soon